Hey guys, this is Grinder here from Androidify and welcome to Android App Development for Beginners number 6. In this video, we're going to have a brief introduction of Android App Components. So what are App Components? Before we dive deeper into App Components, let's look at the definition of the word component. Component means a part of a larger whole. Components in Android are parts that make up an Android app. They're basic building blocks of an Android app. The system enters your app through these components. For example, when you get a notification about calendar app, you click on it and it takes you to a specific activity. There are four different types of components. Activity, services, broadcast receivers, and content providers. Activity. Activity is a single screen in an Android app. When you open up Facebook, what do you see? A list of posts by all your friends. That's an activity. When you go to your account settings, the content is totally different. That's an activity as well. Although these individual activities make up a unified app experience, each activity is independent of one another. The reason is so that one app can open a specific activity of another app without ever knowing about different activities of that app. For example, if you go to your phone's gallery and share an image through Gmail, what do you see in the Gmail app? You're not brought to a list of emails, instead you're brought to compose activity where you have your image attached ready to be sent. If you click on the back button, you return to the gallery app. Services Services run in the background to perform long-running operations. For example, you can listen to music while browsing the internet or play games while you download apps from the Play Store. Services do not have a user interface. Here you can play Leo's Fortune while downloading Snapchat in the background. If you go to your phone settings and scroll down to apps, you can see a list of services that are running in the background even if those apps are not running. Broadcast receivers. Broadcast receivers respond to announcements broadcasted by the system or apps. When you take a screenshot, you get a notification saying screenshot was captured. If your phone's battery is low, you get a dialog box saying please connect to charger. They can either originate from the system or they can originate from apps. For example, if your phone's storage is running out, you get a notification from the system. When the battery is fully charged or when the phone is plugged to a laptop, you get a notification from the system as well. If you set a reminder in a calendar app or get a new email, you get a notification from Gmail and calendar app. Broadcast receivers are not meant to do a lot of work. They do not have a user interface like services and they're meant to show the users a pathway to go to an app. Content providers. Content providers centralize data in one place and allow many different applications to have access to it. Different apps can add new data, edit existing data, and delete that data. For example, the phone app has access to all of your contacts, Snapchat, WhatsApp, Facebook, and other apps have access to the same contacts. All of these apps can add new contacts which get stored by content providers. Some types of content providers are contacts, calendar, system dictionary, and photos. Another example is when you use Facebook or any app that allows you to type, you might have certain names of your friends that Android OS sees as typos and you have an option to add those names to the dictionary. Uh, when you type the same name in WhatsApp or Google Hangouts, it comes up as one of the suggestions. Manifest file. You must declare all the app components in the manifest file so the system knows that those components actually exist. When you create a new project with an empty activity, Android Studio automatically declares that activity in the manifest file. You can declare permissions such as accessing the internet, minimum API level, hardware requirements such as accessing the camera app or the fingerprint scanner. We'll talk about manifest file in more detail in the upcoming videos. All of these components are declared under the application element. To declare an activity, you use activity element. Uh, to declare a service, you use service element. For broadcast receivers, you use receiver element. And for content providers, you use provider element. Uh, here's an example of a declared activity. Like I said previously, all of these components must go under the application element. For each of these components, we'll go into complete detail in the upcoming videos. In the next video, we'll talk about intents and how they relate to these components. Until then, thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to follow the written article over at androidify.com. Feel free to follow me on social media. The links will be in the description. Please subscribe to the channel for more content. I'm Gurinder Singh from Androidify and I'm committed to helping you guys along the way.